Hello everybody, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex coming to you from my brother's basement. Happy Thanksgiving everybody. This is a weird setup, but it is the best place in the house for good lighting and peace and quiet from children. So, you know, the show must go on. Uh, I've been doing a best games coming to retail video for a long time. I'm in touch with 500 or so publishers to figure out what's coming out. To retail well a few months ago I started this best expansions slash new additions coming to retail and here we go that's what we're doing right now best expansions new additions coming to retail in November 2022 so the first half of the video will be best new expansions and the second half of the video will be best new editions of games uh, Arcane Wonders is actually releasing expansions to a couple of their games in November. We've got Picture Perfect, the Sherlock expansion. This is for their game, Picture Perfect, which is a really interesting game about trying to arrange characters in a diorama sort of setting in order to take the perfect picture. You know, this person wants to be next to this person and, and Aunt Judy hates Uncle Carl and won't stand next to them and stuff. You know, kind of feels like a Thanksgiving themed uh, thing, you know, where we get a lot of people together and they might not all get along. Uh, so in Picture Perfect, the Sherlock expansion, it turns the game Picture Perfect into a murder solving uh, game. It adds a new play mode, a new game mode, uh, and you wanna find out who the culprit is and set Sherlock and Watson up to either catch him or let him escape. So, you know, it, uh, it raises the stakes of Picture Perfect. This is not just about a picture, this is now also about a murder. So that's a Sherlock expansion for Picture Perfect. Uh, Arcane Wonders is also releasing a, an expansion uh, to Mortem Medieval Detective called The Shelter. Uh, Mortem Medieval Detective came out last year? I think the end of the last year. And, uh, you know, it, it's a storytelling uh, detective game as well. You know, you are figuring out a case, but it's set in like a grim medieval noir world. Uh, and so, you know, this in this game, you are... Still doing the same thing, you're taking on the roles of uh, secret organization agents and investigating mysterious events. This just adds a scenario to the game. So if you've played through all of the scenarios in the original Mortem Medieval Detective, now you have more content. They do recommend that you play the base game first and then move on to this. However, this can be played as a standalone scenario. So... Um, you know, even without having played the original game and knowing its plot and stuff like that. So if you want more story for Medieval Detective, now you got it! Uh, okay, so one of the games that came out uh, that I talked about in my recent Best Games Coming to Retail video was Endless Winter uh, came out it, to retail. You know, it was one of the most anticipated Kickstarters for a long time. It's been fulfilling this fall and now had its retail release in November. Well, there's also three expansions to Endless Winter that also released to retail this month. They released all the content at the same time. Uh, and so, let's see. The first of which is uh, Endless Winter Ancestors. Uh, so, this one, it adds a large variety of new cards into the game, including alternate animal cards, interactive culture cards, chief specialty cards, and more. Uh, so if you, you know, if you've already been playing Endless Winter a bunch and you want more content for it, well now you got it in Endless Winter Ancestors. There's also Endless Winters, Endless Winter Rivers and Rafts. Uh, so this one uh, adds a new, new modular tiles to the terrain map, including riverways and unique starting locations. It also introduces landmarks, which tribes can control to gain powerful eclipse phase benefits. So this is gonna add stuff to the map, to the board, all that sort of stuff. You know, again, all of these expansions can be combined or can be played on their own uh, with the base game. You need the base game for any of them, but um, you know, you, you can get all three of these, you can get one of them if you want. The third expansion coming out to Endless Winter is Cave Paintings. 
Uh, so what this one does is each player gets a dry erase player board, which they can connect dots and draw lines onto to unlock powerful one-time bonus actions, ongoing eclipse phase benefits, and end game scoring possibilities. So it adds a little sort of drawing element by connecting dots and unlocking powers. So, you know, thematically works with Endless Winter where you are building a Paleo-American tribe, you know, now, hey, you figured out art and you can do some cave paintings. Hey, you're the talk of the town. You're the talk of the tribe. What? He drew a water buffalo? I didn't even know you could do that on a wall, you know? So, all right, uh, Fireside Games is releasing an expansion to Castle Panic. So if you know Castle Panic, it's a, a really great family weight tower defense cooperative game where you are defending a castle from trolls and bad guys and that sort of stuff. And it's really fun and it works for a lot of ages. Uh, well, this is adding, this expansion is called Crowns and Quests. So what this one does is it adds new characters and quests to the world of Castle Panic. Uh, players can choose from a variety of playable characters, and each of the characters has their own, their own game-changing power, so it adds a little bit of asymmetry to the game with player powers. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's 12 playable characters, uh, and then uh, it also adds a bunch of different quests that the players must have to survive to win the game and that sort of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, you know... Um, at the start of the game, players choose one standard quest and one end game quest, and until both are completed, the pile of monsters will refill, refill over and over. Ah, you gotta defeat these monsters and the quests now. So it adds a little bit of challenge to the game of Castle Panic. Uh, Play All Day Games is releasing Cata Catapult Feud Hydra expansion. So Catapult Feud is a uh, also a tower defense game, but with real physical parts and components to it. You are basically building a castle wall and then launching boulders and cannonballs and that sort of stuff over at the other player's castle walls and trying to knock down their pieces. They've released a lot of different expansions to this, which basically adds, you know, different sort of big toy elements to the game of Catapult Feud, you know. One was a volcano, one was a big Viking ship. Well, this one is the Hydra expansion, so it adds a giant Hydra to the middle of the board. Essentially, you place a Hydra between the two players, and then you have to try to tame the Hydra, if, which is very risky. You know, it can backfire, the Hydra can come after you, but if you are able to tame the Hydra, you could shoot another boulder out of its mouth at the other player and that sort of stuff. So, you know, definitely has a lot of table presence with this giant Hydra in the middle of the table that can shoot some uh, boulders out of it. So, you know, Catapult Feud, very fun game for all ages, you know, can play as young as seven, but you also, I've played it with just adults who want a silly time, you know. So, there you go, Catapult Feud Hydra. Renegade Game Studios is releasing a new expansion to the G.I. Joe deck building game. This one is called Cold Snap. So, G.I. Joe deck building game, uh, Renegade Games has been doing a lot of these deck building games that are very thematic, you know, they've got one based on Transformers, they got one on G.I. Joe, so if you know the G.I. Joe IP, you kind of get what this is. It's all about you're playing as the G.I. Joe characters and, you know, building your deck to defeat bad guys. Well, in Cold Snap, um, you have to battle Destro and the Weather Dominator device before the world freezes. Then, face off against Zartan and his Dreadnought gang before the world goes crazy. <laughs> So, you know, basically just adding a bunch of different cards to the G.I. Joe deck building experience, different challenges, that sort of stuff. Renegade Game Studios is also releasing an expansion to the My Little Pony Adventures in Equestria deck building game called True Talents. So, um, you know, like I said, they've been doing a lot of these deck building games. Well, the My Little Pony one 
is meant to be a, a little bit uh, simpler than some of the other ones, but you know, still very deck building goodness, right? And uh, based on the IP of My Little Pony. Uh, so in this, in the True Talents expansion, you can uh, play as the Cutie Mark Crusaders and use the Discover ability to rally classmates and Crusaders to your cause. It's got new characters, hurdles, challenges, all a bunch of different stuff. And the new Discover mechanic encourages themed deck building. So you want to build your deck uh, according to a specific theme. Uh, so that's kind of fun, you know, adds uh, some different stuff there, adds a lot more content. Uh, My Little Pony, the game, only came out like late summer, early fall, and so they've already got multiple expansions for it. So there's a lot of content for you there. Uh, Steve Jackson Games is releasing Munchkin 10 Time Warp. Uh, so this brings you 112 new cards that are compatible with the classic set of Munchkin. Uh, so in this version, this is all about sort of fake history, false history, all that sort of stuff. You're, you're making history, you're shaking history, you're breaking history, you're faking history, all that sort of stuff. So if you're a, if you're a history fan, you know, if you, and if you don't know, Munchkin is a sort of chaotic card game where you are trying to... Uh, beat other players and uh, there's been a lot of content over the year it's been around for a while uh, but it's a small box game uh, with a lot of fun in it so now there's even more content for Munchkin all right Stonemeyer Games is releasing Wingspan Asia this is the third expansion to the hit game Wingspan all about birds uh, and this adds birds from Asia. You know, we had Wingspan Europe uh, or Oceania or I don't remember what they're all called. You get it. Your fans of Wingspan are yelling at your screen right now because I didn't get all of them right. But you know what? I'm getting this one right. Wingspan Asia. So this uh, adds uh, a lot of different birds uh, from Asia. They picked these birds in Wingspan Asia for o from over 280 uh, I mean, 2,800 species, so a lot of different ones. One of the interesting things about Wingspan Asia is it is a standalone game for one or two players. It is also a card expansion to the original Wingspan, and it is also a six to seven player expansion via the new flock mode. So there's a bunch of different plays to wing, play, ways to play Wingspan Asia. You can play it alone by itself as a two-player game you can combine it with the original game you can do add even six seven players so that's kind of fun you, it adds a bunch of different game modes to wingspan and if i know all the wingspan fans out there you might have already gotten this one all right those were the expansions now we're getting into some new edition games uh arcane wonders is releasing critters at war flies lies and supplies this is a re-implementation of their ga game, Air, Land, and Sea, Spies, Lies, and Supplies. But instead of making it sort of war-themed, it's making it like anthrop anthropomorphic creatures. That's a hard word to say. Anthrop anthropomorphic. You got it. Uh, if a dog was here and was anthropomorphized, that's not how that works. No, it's taking object. No, is it? No, we're taking, it could be animals. It could be animals or objects making them people. You get what I'm saying. I'm rambling now. It's this stove. It's really intense and kind of scares me like a home alone situation, you know, in the basement with, uh, with the furnace that keeps turning on. I see you, furnace. Okay, getting back to the point. Critters at War. It is a two-player only game um, where, you know, it's the same same exact gameplay as Air, Land, and Sea where you are fighting over control of certain theaters of war, but instead now we've got all these cute critters that we are playing down and that sort of stuff. So it can be combined with Air, Land, and Sea. It can, can be combined with, uh, it can be bind with, uh, with uh, other versions of it, you know, that sort of stuff, but it can also be played alone. So there you go. Critters at War, Flies, Lies, and Supplies. Also very cute name, you know what I mean? Uh, all right, 
Now we have Backspindle Games is releasing the uh, collector's edition of Clax, a Discworld board game. So this is based on Terry Pratchett's novel, Going Postal. If you haven't read Terry Pratchett, really good fantasy writer. Uh, and, and in this, this, uh, this is the sort of deluxe edition of the game. So you're going to get cool miniatures in it, uh, all of that sort of stuff. Um, one of the things that I like is you can play the collector's edition of Discworld Clax in four different ways. There's a cooperative game uh, that recreates the race against the post office in the novel. There is also a competitive game where players try to outdo each other to become the fastest Clax operator. There is a two-player race game, which is ideal for teaching children. And finally, there's a brand new quick fire game for two or more players called Goblin Glory. So if you're a fan of uh, Terry Pratchett's writing, or if you're a fan of, um, this is a, you know, a family weight game, that sort of stuff with a lot of different ways to play it. There you go. Clax, a Discworld board game. Devere Games is releasing two new versions of very cl classic games. So Devere, Devere is releasing their own version of Cockroach Poker. Uh, and Devere, you know, makes real high quality games. I, all of their games, I'm always very impressed by their games. And so I'm sure they're going to do Cockroach Poker justice here. Uh, if you don't know Cockroach Poker, it is a, it's a reverse set collection game that has nothing to do with poker really at all. There's bluffing in it, but there's not really any poker. You are trying to force another player to get a set of four of any type of critter. So you're trying to screw other people over and it's, you know, just a fun, fun little card game. Uh, Devere is also releasing their own version of Cheating Moth, which is, you know, both of these games came out decades ago. Uh, and so this is a, an updated version of them. In Cheating Moth, you are playing a card down um, and the card has to be either one, it has to be one number off than the card that's already down in the discard pile. Uh, but it encourages you to cheat. You know, you can accidentally drop a card down the back of your shirt. You know, you can put one under your shoe. You are trying to cheat to get rid of all of the cards in your hand. So, you know, that's fun. Most games encourage no cheating. This is one that very much encourages cheating. So I like that, you know, it makes it all about who can be the most subtle when they <coughs> cough and all of a sudden a card is gone out of their hand, you know? Uh, we talked about earlier that Fireside Games was releasing a an expansion to uh, Castle Panic. Well, they're also releasing a second edition of Castle Panic and a new big box edition of Castle Panic. So in the second edition of Castle Panic, uh, it is all just about new artwork, new dice, all that sort of stuff. So um, it, is, it says it, it's, it, it's the exact same gameplay as the original game, but it's got, uh, you know, new higher quality components, new artwork, all that sort of stuff. So, and then the big box um, is, it, in, it includes Castle Panic and then four expansions. It includes the Wizard's Tower, the Dark Titan, Engines of War, and the new Crowns and Quests expansion. So you can get all of that stuff in one box uh, if you're a big fan of Castle Panic. And again, like I said, Castle Panic such a great family weight cooperative game. So if you're looking for a game to play with sort of all ages during the holidays, it's a real fun one. Funko Games is releasing Elf Journey from the North Pole collector's edition so uh this game came out a couple of years ago but now it's got a cool fun you know box that looks like a snow globe and it's got all new um you know it's got uh, new uh embossed cards and uh all that sort of stuff so in the game you are playing cards on a board to move buddy the elf you know leading him towards different landmarks along his journey to find his dad so you know basically same thing as the movie it's one of my favorite christmas movies of all time it's one i watch at least every other year if not every year it's just so joyful and i'm sure this game feels the same way you know you can't have buddy the elf without joy um uh, 
Space Cowboys, along with Asmodee, is releasing Splendor Duel. So this is a two-player version of the classic Splendor game. You know, a lot of Splendor, very popular uh, light engine building game that I think got a lot of people into the board game hobby, including me. Splendor was probably one of the first games, one of the first strategy games that I played. You know, I'd been playing code names and telestrations and party games like that. Well, Splendor was like a real introduction into a little bit more strategic games in the board game hobby for me. And uh, Splendor Duel makes it a two-player game, but it also, you know, one of the things that they say specifically here is, uh, it, you know, it features a lot of the same gameplay mechanisms of the original Splendor, but it's a bit more complex, dynamic, interactive, rich, tense, and mean. So you gotta be ready to screw over other people in Splendor. Uh, I will say, I spent a couple of weekends ago at BGG Con in Dallas, and I uh, talked to multiple people. I didn't get a chance to play a full version of this, but I talked to multiple people who did, and everybody loved it. Everybody I talked to was like, Splendor Duel, you gotta check it out. So, you know, really came with high recommendations uh, for me. So it's definitely one I want to check out. Uh, the Op is releasing uh, a new version of their Rising series. Uh, so, you know, they had uh, the Batman Rising, they had SpongeBob Rising, they had Thanos Rising. This one is Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising. So, the Rising series is uh, a cooperative game where we're all working together to defeat a bad guy. And that's the no different here, you know. Um, it's a cooperative card and dice game for one to five players who take command of different uh, av Avatar Aang, Katara, Sokka, Toph, and Zuku as they fight back against the Fire Nation to restore balance to the world. So one of the fun things about just the, the Rising series is they have these huge showpiece, um, I don't even know, I mean, you would call them like figurines, right? In the middle of the board is this huge figurine and in every version of them, they're super cool and they're pretty collectible. So that's one of the cool reasons to have them. You know, it got a lot of table presence with this huge figurine in the middle of the board. The Op is also releasing Trivial Pursuit Dungeons and Dragons Ultimate Edition. So this is a Trivial Pursuit game, you know, the classic trivia game, but with Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Uh, so you have to navigate a custom game board with iconic D&D character movers. Uh, it's got 1,800 questions that are about Dungeons and Dragons, adventures, monsters, cosmology, characters, magic and miscellany, all different sort of Dungeons and Dragons themed stuff here. So if you're a huge Dungeons and Dragons fan, well, you can test that knowledge now in this new Trivial Pursuit. WizKids is releasing a new version of Rock Paper Wizard called Marvel Rock Paper Heroes. So Rock Paper Wizard, to anybody who doesn't know, was a very silly game where you were basically Rochambeauing and then throwing different hand symbols down and then the different hand symbols corresponded to spells that you were doing. You were wizards, being like, yeah, you know, whatever it was. And then those different hand gestures you went with helped you do different things, move forward on the board, move other people back, all that sort of stuff. Well, so Marvel Rock Paper Heroes uses that same sort of hand throwing gesture mechanism, but instead the gestures represent the powerful mutant abilities of eight iconic Marvel heroes who are training to become protectors of mutant kind. So, you know, that's pretty fun. You can be Storm, Phoenix, Wolverine, all different types of Marvel heroes. So, you know, I always really liked Rock, Paper, Wizard because it was just super silly, like doing all these different hand gestures, but it still had some strategy to it. So if you like that idea, you, you now you can do it with Marvel heroes. So that's pretty fun. And then also, uh, WizKids is releasing Super Skill Pinball Holiday Edition. Uh, so this is a, um, Super, Skills, Super Skill Pinball is a roll and write game that really feels 
like a pinball game. You know, you are doing crossing off all these things to keep your balls up on the board, to get bonus balls, all that sort of stuff. So this, this holiday themed version of Super Skill Pinball adds three new pinball boards and each of those boards uh, represents a different classic holiday movie. You've got Elf, you've got Christmas Vacation, and you have A Christmas Story. So same sort of, you know, combo-tastic, roll and write, you know, that feels like a pinball game, but now with, you know, these very specific themes in it and, and sort of specific goals too, you know. In Elf, you're, you're following Buddy to the North Pole. In the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, you've got players shooting for a big Christmas bonus. And in A Christmas Story, you're, you, you know, you've gotten those leg lamps, a bunny suit, an air rifle, all different sort of stuff there. So that's what I got for you. Those are the best expansions and new additions coming to retail in November 2022. Uh, you know, I, I, this video takes a lot of work, uh, a lot of research and all that sort of stuff. So thanks so much to for everybody for liking and subscribing and sharing it, all that sort of stuff. I can't include everything. There's just too many games to include every month. So if you want to check it out, I do have a Patreon where you can find out uh, more things that are releasing uh, this month. Uh, so as always, thank you so much. I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex.